It's confusing and frustrating to find duplicate devices in your Google Home application or with your Google Assistant. And this can be especially frustrating if you have a very complex smart home. How do you fix this? Find out today. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by helping you deal with the duplicate devices issue. This is one of the things that Google support even at times struggles with because it's not always contained to their application or their system. There are a number of sources for this issue and so I'm going to tackle one of the easiest ones first. Lots of times what I get on the channel is people who have you know devices from a vendor like uh, Belkin here with their Wemo smart plug. They have devices like Yee Lights or lights from different manufacturers and they're contained within one application. It's usually a smaller manufacturer. It's usually someone that isn't mainstream that this specific issue occurs with. But what happens is you've either factory reset a device or you have renamed a device and still the old one remains there. Now, one of the reasons Google support can't help you with this is because they will often take you through the process of unlinking and relinking that specific service. So they'll take you through just the removal of that service and then yep, bring it back in and then everything comes back. Now, the reason is it's actually a duplicate device sitting in the service, the other service. So if we were talking about Wemo here, we'd be talking about duplicate devices hidden within the database of your Wemo account. Now, the first way to tackle this is quite simple. What you can do because Google Home allows you to do this is change the name of that device and add a second home or a third home or whatever you want to do inside the Google Home application. Once you've added that other home, move that device over to the home and change its name to something you are not going to make a mistake with. This will get rid of that duplicate device and it will allow you to control your original device the way you want to. As you can see here, I have two devices called the PC monitor in my smart home. Now, when I go into the device settings of the duplicate, I can actually tap on the word home and I'm going to add a new home. Now, I'm just going to call it anything I'd like. In this case, I'm calling it nothing and I'm going to move the device over. It's going to ask for a room, fill that out, and then I'm going to change the name to something silly. You could use a number of strange characters if you'd like here, but but now we have not a real device in no real room in the nothing home. And when I go back to my original home, what I have is one plug called PC monitor in the office as originally hoped for. If that doesn't work for you or you'd like to go a little bit deeper and really deal with this issue, then I have a five-step process that you can follow. The first step is to unlink the vendor service from the Google Home application. Then what you're going to do is delete and or reset all of the devices in the vendor application. So you might need to factory reset everything. The third step of the process is to create a new account in that vendor application. So get logged out, create a new account, and then you are going to add those devices back into the vendor application and go back into Google Home and add in that new account as a new service into Google Home and that will remove all of the duplicate devices for you. The other issue is much more complicated and I have talked about it before on the channel but not in a specific video. I'm going to give you an example. So a few months ago, we all experienced the fact that our TP-Link plugs could go into Samsung SmartThings. The same thing has happened with Yeelight, with SwitchBot, with a number of other vendors. They could all come into Samsung SmartThings. Now, at that point, I had already linked TP-Link into Google Home. So those products were already in the Google Home application. Then I linked them into Samsung SmartThings and I I think you can see where this is going. So the problem actually becomes when you have linked multiple services together, you have actually created a duplicate device. See, when I went ahead and linked TP-Link to Samsung SmartThings and I already had SmartThings talking to Google Home, then I also had the original devices from TP-Link direct into Google Home. So therefore, I had created two of the same devices. Philips Hue also ends up being one of the worst of 
fenders, and probably lots of you are sitting there saying, yeah, I have duplicate Philips Hue devices. It ends up being one of the worst offenders because it can be integrated into so many different platforms, and you've probably done this a few times. The good news is some of the bigger hubs allow you to manage this directly. They will actually give you the option to pull out devices out of what you're sharing with the major voice assistant. So inside Samsung SmartThings application and inside the Hubitat application, I will show you how to manage this in just a moment. Now there are two different ways to really manage this situation and I think it's important that we talk about both of them. The first method is really a distributed method and what I mean by that is for every service that you have, you connect it separately into Google Home. So that would mean your Wemo is connected directly to Google Home, your TP-Link, your Yee Lights, your SwitchBot, all of these different smaller platforms are connected directly to Google Home. The positives of that is you're getting the highest reliability you can because each service is directly connected. There's nothing in the middle getting in the way that could fail. And so you're getting the highest reliability. You also get once in a while with direct connections, the uh, some specialized functions. Philips Hue is a great example of that because you have their slow wake up and their slow sleep routines for the lights where you can go over 30 minutes either up or down. But on the flip side, if you were to use, say, uh, Samsung SmartThings or Hubitat as an aggregator, number one, they give you lots of control around that. Like I said, I'm going to show you. But number two, you're also gaining a lot of smart home capability because those hubs have the best rule engines. They have the best automation. They have the best capability for creating really custom automation for you to really match your day-to-day -day life. But they do reduce overall reliability because if I put a, a Wemo plug into Samsung SmartThings and then I attach it to Google Home, then all three things have to be working in order for me to turn on and off my Wemo plug. So what I mean by that is Google Home has to be working and their connection to Samsung SmartThings has to be working and Samsung SmartThings and their connection has to be working to Wemo. So all three of those things have to be working. So you do lower the overall reliability and a bit in terms of speed as well because you have that extra processing step so it's important to keep that in mind but I prefer the aggregator method of connecting all of these services because of that overall automation capability now either way either way you want to do this the important part is that you know how to manage this so I'm going to show you Samsung smart things and Hubitat really quickly how to manage this in both of those smart home hubs We'll start with Samsung SmartThings where I'm going to go into the menu and then click the gear icon and then connected services. Inside of here you will see the word Google and you're going to tap on that as well. Now any of the different sections allow you to add in or remove products from Google Home. So what you're going to do is choose with a check mark which devices you want to go into Google Home. Any ones that you uncheck the next time you ask the Google assistant to sync my devices those will be actually removed from Google Home any ones you add will be added at the very bottom of the Google Home application Hubitat is very easy inside of the app section of their portal interface you will find Google Home if you don't you haven't done the integration now you can set the location modes and again you're checking off devices that you would like to have go into Google Home so just make sure you're not selecting duplicates hit the update button and then done. And the next time you ask to sync, you will find the right Hubitat devices inside of Google Home. So there you go guys, this should help you to get those duplicate devices out. And if it hasn't, leave that down in the description below. Happy to help with your situation. Let me know what service you have, what you are doing for a connection and some of your history with maybe unlinking and relinking the service or factory resetting the device. Otherwise guys, make sure you subscribe to automate your life for tutorials and for help with your smart home just like this otherwise guys thanks for watching and of course don't hate automate